Hello guys and welcome back to Big Brother and we've got a chaotic two days to talk about in the Big Brother house. We have got the start of a shopping task, the end of a feud, the start of another one and so many more iconic moments from this show. It's been so entertaining so far. Every single episode has been dramatic. Every single episode's had wonderful, wonderful moments and these two episodes are like none other. So if you do like the content that you're watching, make sure to like, comment and subscribe, but let us get into discussing these two crazy episodes. So this is a little quick segment about Misogincello. Um, I do not like him and I've just become a little bit increasingly uncomfortable with his attitude and behaviour towards the women in the house. He likes to play up the fact that he's a lover, he likes to make sure the girls are having a good time, etc, etc. He's really caring about women and loves them and, and wants to do the best. He told Sarah that she smells like period and tea bags, and then when she was like, uh, can you repeat that and say, say it to my face again? He was like, oh, you smell like tea bags," And he obviously cut out the, the bit that he obviously knew was bad. It just doesn't make him come across very nicely. And it's frustrating when we've got someone like him in the house and we're having to say goodbye to one of Lily, Days, Ali and Martha. It's ridiculous. That's absolutely awful because all four of those bring 10 times more entertainment than Monsogicello does. I've got to get better at saying his name like that because it is a little bit of a mouthful. But either way, there was also another moment later in the episode. I think I missed the comment, so I don't know exactly what he said. But from what Sarah was saying, she was doing some twerking and like having a joke with everyone in the house. And he made a comment about getting an erection from it, which is just wildly inappropriate. It's not OK. You don't make those kind of comments towards women. It's just uncomfortable and a pretty like degrading and awful behavior like it's just gross so can we please just like ax him from the show i reckon he might get ejected i don't think he's making it out them front doors i think he's gonna get backdoored immediately hopefully he does so when it comes to ali and khaled they were at it again and khaled was attacking ali for once again I just like, I just find it really, really jarring the way they have their conversations because Ali is trying to put a stop to it. And she so far has every single time. She just, le she just like, leave it. Let's just leave it. Let's move on. And he's always constantly just bringing it back up. And it does get a little bit jarring. It is starting to feel like he is proving her right in everything that he's saying and doing now because when she was like oh i'm gonna go and he was like go where and she was like i'm going home i, I don't want to be here anymore this is not i don't like being in conflict it's not my my happy place like i i just think that th this is it stay outstayed it's welcome for me and suddenly he switched tack some tact and was like oh my god i'm so sorry no no don't go don't go no no you'll regret this etc etc and it was almost like as soon as he realized that he had had caused an impact on her that meant she was going to quit the game. He suddenly wanted to take back what he'd said, etc, etc. I just didn't feel comfortable with that conversation. I just thought it was weird and uncomfortable. But fortunately, there was some stuff said that really, really made me interested. She said there are parts of you that are genuine. There are parts of you that are false. So she's not saying that he's a fake person. She's saying there are just parts of what you do that come across as fake. And she also, and he also said, he keeps saying this and it really, really jars me. But he's like, oh, I'm just 23. Okay, I'm just 22. But that doesn't mean that I want to be treated in any different way to someone who's 43, 42, 55. I'm an adult at the end of the day, and so are you. You're one year older than me, and yet you're behaving like you're just a child, and you, you can't be spoken to in this way, and we must handle you with care. Act your age, mate. Act your age. Fortunately, it was put behind them, and they did make up. But... I don't know. It was just such an awkward encounter. I was like, why are we dragging this out? I thought we dealt with this two days ago, but clearly this we're on the third day of this now. And finally we've got a resolution. But like, did it really have to take Ali almost walking out of the house to do it? Really? And for everyone who was saying that like, oh, Ali's pathetic for wanting to leave the house. I, I understand it. When you get in these situations and you just you just jump to the worst possible conclusion sometimes it's it's what 
like her condition of ADHD and autism is, she does just jump straight to the extremes of like, I need to get out of here, I need to get out of here. And she does make rash, bold decisions. That's quite literally the traits of being an ADHD autistic person is literally that. I have so many friends that sort of have the same flight or fight or flight reflex as Ali and therefore I sympathise a lot with her but some people are calling her fake etc etc it's just coming across as nasty whereas like I don't think she meant any harm with what she was saying she was just like I just think that there are parts of you that appear genuine and parts of you that don't appear genuine obviously the way she was saying it wasn't ideal like the, the way she came out of it like, it was just a bit much. But, like, she's explained herself now three times. And it does feel like Khaled is just trying to jump down her throat every single chance he can get. And it is just getting a little bit repetitive and a little bit boring. So, the task in this episode was basically Khaled and uh, Shegan were in the diary room. They had to guess who was more something than somebody else. And then the housemates would choose between them. And then if they got it correct, then they would earn a reward. Now, this is what we learned from it. Apparently, the group thinks that Marcello is more of an attention seeker than Shegan, that Nathan is more manipulative than Izaz, Hannah is more, has contributed less than Khaled, Dean is more authentic than Marcello, which I agree with, uh, Hannah is self-centered uh, more so than Thomas, Emma would play dirty to win over Martha, and as a result of winning this task, I thought they actually lost it. I thought they got the majority of the answers wrong. As a result of winning the task, they won their hot water back. Woo! They finally get to take a hot shower. For now, at least. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that, shall we? So, we had another rule break. And I gotta say, in the last season, the rule breaks were a bit dull. Like, the, the punishments weren't really that good great but we've also already had like two crazy punishments in this series we've had we're gonna chain you to the railings in the kitchen we're going to turn off your hot water and this one was we're gonna make you sit in the garden in a jail cell and we're gonna turn the hot water off again it's tough it really is tough like it actually is rough and tough these peeps honestly. So they had to sit outside in their little jail cell. It was Lily and Martha that did it. And we all saw it on the previous night. We all saw them like say the things about nominations. So we knew it was coming. It wasn't like it was a shock. But either way, hilarious, hilarious, hilarious. And actually that night there was a fire alarm in the big brother house, which meant they had to get evacuated from the house. And obviously that meant that they were let out of the jail early. But either way, hilarious, hilarious, hilarious. Breaking news. This is a party political broadcast from the Big Brother Party. Yes, that is right. Politics has finally come to Big Brother for better or for worse. I don't really know how I would do that, if I'm honest. <laughs> I don't think I would want to introduce politics into this. Little bit orcs, little bit crazy. However... I was impressed with how they did the house up. There's a really, really cool Downing Street facade that leads to, like, the bedroom and the task room. I thought that was really, really cool. And they also made Khaled the Prime Minister, because obviously he's head of household. And then they chose the ministers to be Days, Nathan, and Emma. Which I think, actually, out of everyone in the house, those three were going to give the most drama and entertainment. Because I think they're all very willing to play the character is what I would say like they are very very much going to have fun with this role whereas I think some other people would take it too seriously and that would just be boring for the viewers it's like how in the previous series choosing Yinran, Trish and Henry for the big wigs was the perfect choice because they had so much fun with it and it was really really entertaining so essentially what they have to do is they got given a budget of I think a hundred million pounds and they could choose to spend that hundred million pounds over certain tasks to make them easier for people. I gotta say I was impressed. I thought it was interesting twists. I thought there was some good gameplay here. It seems like the task is looking to be an interesting one and it definitely did bring some drama. I can tell you that much. So the first challenge saw Lily, Dean, Marcello, Baked Potato and Ali 
filling in some potholes and painting a road outside in the garden. Honestly, I gotta say, I I really want to be in the room where they decide what the Big Brother tasks are going to be because I actually couldn't have come up with this. This one was kind of crazy. They just had to literally like make cement or not make cement. What's the stuff that goes on the road? Tar? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, the gra graph, graph, uh, no, as asphalt. Is that what it's called? I don't know. But anyway, they had to make that. They had to put it in the potholes. They had to do it within a strict time limit. They had to do it as best as they can. As far as I'm aware, they passed it. The politicians actually decided not to spend any of their budget on making this easier. So actually, I feel like if they didn't do it, then it's the politician's fault. But the politicians are living a lovely lifestyle right now. Emma was the one in charge of this mission, like whipping them all into shape, being like, come on, come on, let's do this. Ali was criticised for taking too long, making sure that her night lines were really, really neatly painted. Baked Potato was told off for having not so neatly drawn lines, which I found really, really funny. And I feel like Emma was loving this task just a little bit too much. But I found her actually very, very entertaining. And I think that is definitely where her strengths lie is in these tasks when she's able to sort of like have fun, let loose a little bit. But I also do love a cheeky bitch inside, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So up next, the next challenge saw Martha having to blow a paper windmill. I was really confused by this challenge. I, I think I was on my phone when they were explaining it. So when I just look up and I see Martha going <laughs> to this paper windmill for like 20 minutes, I was like, huh? Huh? That's craziness. That is absolutely crazy. But either way, she did fantastic, and she managed to do it, apparently, as far as I'm aware. So, you know, you know what? Gotta give credit where credit's due, and credit most definitely does belong to Martha. Well done, Martha. Big claps. You've proven that you're a team goal getter. I don't know. I'm chatting shit at this point, let's be honest. So, I don't know what kind of game is as is playing, but I'm not appreciating it i don't know i feel like it's a case of like this whole thing erupted out of absolutely nothing apparently it's all gonna kick off tonight because he is fuming with them for something which we'll explain a little bit later but the whole thing was basically over a what smoked salmon bagel that was put in the bin by dean it was one of the leftovers from the lunch from the politician and Dean just chucked it in the bin purely because he didn't want anybody on the sort of like common people team to eat the politician's food. And I thought that made like made a lot of sense in my head. Like it just did make sense that they would want to get rid of the stuff to avoid temptation because you know Lily would want a little bit of a salmon smoked salmon bagel absolutely she'd devour that or she probably wouldn't I don't know if she likes smoked salmon but either way you get my point maybe misogynello would want it I don't know but the whole thing stemmed from I think Emma said something like why did you put it in the bin and then just sort of like that was about that was it that was where the conversation was left but then Izaz was going around telling people that Emma was fuming, Emma was upset, Emma was pissed off. And that's got back to her and she's like, um, I don't quite think that's how it's working, but it is what it is. Okay, is he like shit stirring? And then like later on, he admitted to shit stirring and just wanted to mix the pot up and cause a little bit of drama today. And I just thought like, why have you done that? Why? Like I'm all here for like a little bit of cheeky shit stirring. But, like, this just felt like it was something or nothing. And it's now snowballed into many people in the house can't stand you. Nathan, Dean, Emma, Lily. They all just are very wary of you because you've caused a shit stirring situation. And I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like it was, like, wrong of him to do it. I feel like they took it too seriously. But equally, like, it was just a little bit of, like, a really weird thing to do. I can't lie. Like, it... It just made him seem like he was trying to start drama for nothing. And then when he was like, yeah, that was what I was doing, kind of. I was like, hmm, okay, cool, I guess. So the last challenge of the day was, well, there was it was kind of like a double barrel challenge. The politicians had to choose two people to stay up all night and guard the entrance to 10 Downing Street. And... They got the option to spend money on an extra person so that they could take shifts. 
but they were told that the people guarding could not fall asleep, otherwise they would incur a penalty. And they were like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But they decided not to choose the extra member. And then they chose Izaz and Thomas to be the ones to stay up all night. Thomas, I don't know, he was a casualty of war, but Izaz was put up there because I think some of the politicians were just a little bit pissed off about the whole smoked salmon and cream cheese bagel thing. Like, how could drama start off of a bagel? Only in the Big Brother house could that happen. But anyway, it was interesting because then later the politicians had to sneak out and get more alcohol so they could have a party in, in their little, sort of little room. But they had to sneak it past the security guards. So they went out and asked for toilet paper, went to the room where there was extra alcohol, the storeroom, I think it is, and then walked back and went, oh yeah, Daisy's is on the toilet, she can't wipe her ass. That was hysterical and I had so much fun watching them sneak through past Thomas and Izaz. Honestly, what a great great episode it was but that is all we got time for today there's no iconic quotes and moments because sadly there was nothing really funny happening outside of like what i've already spoken about like it was very entertaining don't get me wrong but there wasn't any iconic quotes or moments i gotta be honest the closest one i had was like sarah doing a bit of rapping and it was a little bit awkward but funny at the same time so thank you guys for watching hope you guys have enjoyed make sure to like comment and subscribe do all that YouTube stuff that you guys do so well. And I'll see you on Saturday for another Big Brother catch up. But until then, make sure to keep on ranting and I'll see you guys later. Bye now.